Hello and welcome to our video service for the fourth Sunday of Advent, coming to you from Trinity Episcopal Church in Lumberton, North Carolina. by thy daily visitation, that when thy Son, our Lord, cometh, he may find in us a mansion prepared for himself. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. service begins on page 323 in the Book of Common Prayer. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His mercy endureth forever. O oh God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to thee, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. 
you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Well, it is almost Christmas once again. We welcome the sweetness of the season and all the memories that give meaning to it and make it unique among anniversaries. And we dread it in a way because for those among us whose youth is past, this time is bittersweet in a way. Another year has gone by, another season of Advent has ended and we are overwhelmed by the rapid passing of our days. We remember what it was to be young, to be filled with anticipation of the moment and of the Christmas day that follows. And now, instead of anticipation, many of us feel nostalgia. For the young among us, the wonder persists, especially when it is filled with creativity with the waiting that is holy and breathless and with the hope that this Christmas will be blessed so that when it becomes a memory, it will be a good one. And for the children, ah, for them there is nothing like Christmas. But today, let, let us forget all that we know just for a few minutes. Let us clear our minds of all that has both blessed and harmed the meaning of this Christmas day. Let your mind become, as the Latin so beautifully puts it, a tabula rasa, blank slate, mind not yet affected by experiences and impressions. As the children do, let's pretend. We'll pretend that we have never heard of Christmas, that the holiday has not been established and no one observes the birth of Jesus. But we are Christians. We form one of the early groups of believers, maybe somewhere in Palestine or in the Asia Minor of the first century, or perhaps in Greece, a group deeply affected and influenced by the presence and the letters of Paul the Apostle, or the remembered sermons of Peter, and John and James, the beloved disciples. We gather in the early dawn for that is the most convenient and the safest time for the ecclesia, the church, to gather. And we have come to sing hymns and worship the Lord that we love, the one who has changed our lives so radically that we do not fear even the death that stalks us because we are his followers and not the admirers of the emperor. We sing a hymn that all of us have memorized because this is what we believe. This is who has called us and changed us forever. This hymn focuses our minds and reminds us why we are followers of the way and inspires us with hope and with courage. Though he was in the form of God, the hymn begins. And we know we are speaking about the person of Jesus Christ. We are filled with awe we remember that he is the firstborn of all creation and we are overwhelmed with gratitude that as the hymn reminds us, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. Imagine, we say to one another, imagine such love, God, the creator, 
sending the God self to this humble place, emptied of glory, emptied of power, humble like a slave, looking at us. We turn and we stare at each other. Some of us are wearing brown tunics because we are slaves. Others of us are dressed in work clothes because when we leave here, we will go to work in the shops of the city. Few are dressed in finely spun linen because they too have become part of us, these rich Romans who have come to love him. And as we look at each other, we marvel. He became like us, we say, and our eyes filled with tears because we then remember that he became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And we know the horror of that death. We have seen it. And some of us will be called to follow him into that kind of suffering. But we're not paralyzed by fear. We sing his name that is above all names. We have seen his glory in our lives, in each other and in the joy that springs forth when we are together, in the peace that enfolds us in the midst of a suffering world. And we bow our knees before him. When we leave here, we will carry all this with us, this marvel of his emptying himself to become like us and the reality of his presence with us every moment. For the early church, this was the Christmas meaning. And they repeated it whenever they gathered. The affirmation of the emptying of God, of kenosis, as St. Paul puts it. So let, let us focus together on this reality, on this hymn today, and forget the noise, forget even the repetition of the wonderful hymns that seem to have lost their meaning because they have been co-opted by our world of materialism and greed, and enter into the holy remembrance of this ancient hymn, saved for us in the letter to the Philippians. It inspired and sustained the early church for generations. May it become the real meaning of this holy time for us, the humbling of God who enters humanity in a human form. This Christ hymn is found in Philippians, the second chapter, verses two through 11. Who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The ancient Christians sang this hymn. Let us sing it as well. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. <laughs>